Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners and welcome to part two super tuning the EQ5 mount as I mentioned before in part one so it's a very good budget a beginner to intermediate EQ mount with go to capabilities and the tracking is sufficient enough to do astro photography, particularly for long exposure. So very good mount, decent sort of price, you know, between costing between 500, maybe 700 pounds, okay? Depends on where you live. Now, I mentioned about in part one, about the tools and equipment you're gonna need. Bear in mind, if you're undertaking this project yourself, Please do not attempt this project if your mount is under warranty for starters. And secondly is if you've got limited uh, knowledge or mechanical knowledge or you don't have much tools in hand then I would not advise you to attempt this project. To doing this project yourself you save a lot of money in the long run and again there are good uh, retailers that can do this like Rubber Valley Optics. They do. Uh, tune up the mounts, re-grease them and all that at a good price. So if you're on a limited budget and you want to save money and you feel like you want to do this project yourself then please feel free to watch these videos. So all the links below, the description below for all the parts and all that you're going to need are all down below. If you check out the description all the parts are there with the links you just click on there and all of the parts necessary for your EQ5 mount. Again please subscribe onto the channel and please hit the notification and anyway in other words hit the hit the bell at the side and you'll keep you notified with the latest videos coming out very very soon. Please like my video all right show your support to astronomy for beginners uh, I put a lot of hard work into this to make these videos so that you guys and girls can attempt it yourself and get the best out of your mount because in the, the day yeah you know, a, a quick tune up like this is going to serve you know it's going to make your mount perform much better now on this mount particular i have exposed up to 10 minutes and more and that is unguided so just can you imagine what a super tune can do to this mount all right it makes it so much difference and usually uh, when you have a mount like this for three or four years Sometimes the grease gets old, uh, things start to uh, work loose and sometimes it is worth that little bit of effort to just occasionally just strip it out and completely regrease it from time to time. So again hit the like button. Uh, we're also available for the Astronomy Facebook group. Please join that group. We've got a lot of uh, excellent information there, especially uh, all the experienced astronomers and astrophotographers that's on that uh, page all right they can give you a lot of information there regarding astronomy so all you all your uh, beginners out there or newcomers please you're welcome to join that astronomy for beginners webpage right we've got a ton of information there that will help you guys and girls out so again please subscribe onto the channel i'm available on my channel and I, I post a lot of these uh, videos out particular for DIY projects like these uh, even product reviews anything uh, astronomy related and based on budget astronomy okay I really focus on that and to for people like you guys and girls who are on a realistic budget so I focus on those particular things based on astronomy and get the most out of your equipment because again end of the day astronomy can be a very expensive hobby and people don't want to spend a ton of money on a lot of things and if your interest does grow and you like to take this uh, even more another step like you want to take pictures for yourself then please feel free because end of the day these are what these videos are all about is to give you some top information so that help you guys and girls make the right choices and you get the best out of this hobby we all love and share don't forget space is a fantastic thing the skies uh, the night sky is always there for us all right it's the best show in, in the universe all right you can't beat it 
and it's always going to be there no matter where. That's me uh, rambling on now. What we're going to do now is now we're going to focus on this project. So now I'm going to get down to business. I'm going to take you through this super tune on this EQ5 mount. The first stage you're going to do is remove the counterweight bar after you remove the telescope tube and the counterweights. So it's quite easy. Unscrew the top part and then it all comes out once you unscrew it. Like so. That comes off. Then remove your decoration axis cables and your RA axis cables. Remove the cap from the polar scope and get yourself some pliers and a rag. Wrap around the polar scope and then crack that off. The reason for putting the rag so you don't damage the polar scope housing. So you then unscrew this and then extract the polar scope. Unscrew these screws on the elevation. So what we're doing is we're going to tilt this mount head to zero degrees or close as that. As that. Get your cross point screwdriver and remove the three screws Now be careful because part of this cover holds a loom So when you take one half, the other half is attached the the RA axis motor, the harness is attached to the cover at the back. So from the cover, remove the harness from the RA axis motor. Like so. Okay, that is the harness removed for that plate. So, as you can see there, we get ourselves a 4mm long reach allen key and we're going to feed this through There's like a little allen bolt inside there and the reason why we tilt the head to zero degrees so when you loosen this, this will slacken the, the actual adjustment bolt that holds the electric motor by doing this you need to hold the electric motor so hold the electric motor as you unscrew the bracket like so and you can see now why we tilt the head and that should come off the bolt should come out like so there you go then you need to remove this top screw here and then remove the RA setting circle now this part is very important there is three tiny allen group screws which are in this retainer ring inside the only access you can get is through this hole where you remove the lock screw for the setting circle you need a 2mm allen key to get access to these grub screws and you need to slacken them off you don't completely remove them but slacken off just enough so that when you remove this retainer this should all come out and to do this you have to unlock the RA access clutch and rotate it so in other words you've got to look through this hole find the grub screw Right, and then use the allen key like so to crack it off so crack these off don't completely remove them so first one's cracked off 
then we rotate the RA axis and then look through there's one there then you again so yeah same detail crack that one off alternatively you can look from the side here rotate you can see where the screws are on the side just rotate it in line here's one there and you can do it from the side here like so again crack that off remember do not remove all the grub screws just have them so that they don't stick out so I have them so they don't stick out so there's that you see you just see the grub screw just protruding out of there so don't completely remove them that's all the grub screws slackened off so as you can see here you can just see two holes there now the idea is this retainer we need to crack this off and remove it however using these pliers is not long enough so this is where this handy tool comes into play so again what we do is we adjust it so we align the lens tool and we're going to once we have got these holes aligned we then crack this off like so so that's cracked off we are not going to remove it just yet so we're going to remove the worm drive from the RA axis using the 4mm allen key and we're going to remove these allen bolts right these can be quite tight like so same detail on the other side remove the worm drive bolt okay and remove that like so so I haven't removed these bolts yet and I've replaced those bolts back in uh, we're going to remove the decanation axis before we remove the RA axis completely if we take this worm drive out the whole thing will collapse so you need to do this in stages so now we're going to move on to the decanation axis so we're at the decanation axis first off use a 5mm allen key crack these then crack off the top screws using the 4mm and the melting bracket here for the motor drive so I remove this allen bolt and the motor should come out like so okay you can now remove the top screws and remove the decanation dovetail vixen dovetail saddle plate like so so the saddle plate is removed so now go to the bottom of the decanation axis and we're going to remove the bottom decanation now this can be tight so again using the pliers okay more grips just remove that setting circle okay and then you can remove the setting circle please note there is a, a washer here yeah, as you can see the washer was actually from the inside here so there's actually two nylon washers okay one here and one on the other side here so take note of those washers now the retainer is exactly the same as the RA axis but this this time it's going to be easier to rotate the head okay and you're going to find 
the, the Allen grub screw. So there's one. I believe there's only two of these. So again, get your two mil Allen key. Okay, and you just want to crack these off. Don't completely remove them. Okay, that's one. We'll take the RA axis again. There's the second one. There's the second one. So we'll get a special tool again. We put in the two pins again. And we line up the two holes, like so, on the retainer. Then we're just going to crack that off. This can be quite stiff. But we just crack that off, right, like so. This will be very stiff because there's, there's this old tacky grease. So don't worry if you struggle, right. The whole idea is to just remove that off, like so, right. And that should remove. Now don't completely remove that retainer just yet. Now I'm going to remove the worm drive on the deck axis. Take these bolts off using the 4mm Allen key. Same detail. There is a grub screw in the middle. That is the adjustment for the, the gap for the worm drive. So don't touch that for the time being. Right. So don't touch this part. You should want to remove the main bolts first. Okay, that is now the detonation worm drive disconnected. Then remove the retainer using the special tool, like so. Alright, you might need to hold the head, okay, and just slacken the retainer. Okay, the, re the retainer is now removed. Slacken the our, uh, deck axis, lock down, and then what you're going to do is you're going to slide this up. Be aware there is a, a plastic PTFE bush in here, just here. Take note of that. There's also a bush in here, take note of that. So again, remove the decoration axis completely like so so here it is at an oven angle I've removed the deck axis shaft carefully prise it open here is the deck axis and again like the NAQ6 it has a gearing aluminium gearing take note of the PTFE shim which is just there and take notice of the shim here there's a shim here. Carefully take that out and don't damage it. That is now the deck axis shaft removed. So this is what you should have. You should have, this is the complete deck axis and it comprises just bushes, there's no bearings. However, if these parts are damaged then you need to replace them, measure them up. Uh, I've provided the sizes of these bushes However, the thickness of the shims, you're going to have to use a vernier, set of vernier calipers to determine the thickness of these shims. So you've got two shims here, a big main shim here, with the, also the recess for the, uh, here's the retainer, there's a plastic bush, then you've got two shims at either side of the, on the aluminium gear ring. That's all the moving parts of this axis. But if these shims or these bushes are damaged in any other way, then they'll need replacing. Again, the link up below with all the sizes I've provided. I've got in contact with a company that can make these at a PTFE. So if you want to order these shims, these PTF shims, or the bushes, then pl please feel free to contact that company and they can make them custom made for you. However, when we look at that, I'm very fortunate, uh, yet again, these bushes are completely fine and they're not damaged. Then remove the decanation axis clutch, lockdown screw, 
remove the brass part be careful there is a plastic plunger and there is a usually a metal plunger so if that's stuck get the screwdriver and just push it out like so okay so that's the the brass lock and stud removed then remove the bottom of the RA axis worm drive remove these bolts using the 4mm allen key this head may rotate just to let you know if it does move hold the head then hold hold the RA axis motor drive slacken the back screws that are supporting it like so and do the same on the other side okay that's both screws removed and that's the RA axis worm drive disconnected so with the worm drive disconnected we now disconnect using the special tool and we're going to remove this final RA retainer lock nut quick way you can just rotate the head like so okay that's the retainer removed take note there is that there is a thrust bearing in here so take note of that then begin to remove like so now you do not hammer this shaft all right it's aluminium shaft all right you may you may damage it so try and push it out by hand again take note of the bushes on this gearing there is a bearing you should be able to prise it out from this end so there's the thrush there's the thrush bearing here so that is now the RA axis completely removed now as you can see here there is the main deep groove bearing here and unfortunately this is dislodged inside and from the look of it it doesn't seem to rotate very very well so I reckon that that bearing is trashed however you can only prise it out this way towards you to extract this you're going to need your hammer and your two millimeter flat punch and we're going to prise this now out. The bearing is very hard to get to so here with this camera angle I can only just get to the edge of the outer race and again same detail we tap it either side like so to get to it now to remove it you may damage the actual main seal because it is literally not much to play about with so again you just gentle taps all the way around like so and keep doing it till the bearing comes out again this is the mo the most I can get with the camera angle as we take a closer as you look see, as we focus in that's where you need to hit it right in that far corner okay it's very hard to see but you've got to tap it out bit by bit and the bearing should prise out very easily Gently, bit by bit, and it will come out. The more it comes out, the easier it is to extract it. And there you go, off. Bearing's removed. And as you can see here, removing the old bearing, as you can see, I can only just get to it, and I've damaged the outer seal. So remember to get the replacement when you remove this. And it is, if you're doing the regrease or you're stripping down anyway, it's best to get a new replacement part. So now we're going to 
remove the head itself, okay? And the reason why I'm going to remove the head is so that we can strip down all the bits that's on the jacking, on the jacking screws, just clean them up. So that's the head removed, as you can see, we're just going to clean this up, clean the, uh, the mechanisms at the, at the bottom, okay? All right, and uh, as you can see there, that's the whole assembly removed. So we've got the Ori axis. Take note of these shims, all right? If they're damaged, again, the description's below, because I measured these uh, spaces out. So you've got one shim here, and you should have one shim at this end here, okay? So don't mix and match these. These are mated specifically for the worm drive. Again, you've got your first bearing, like so, and that's basically the whole layout. Remove the clutch lockdown screw. Then remove the brass lock. You may be lucky, the plunger might be still there, if, and if it doesn't, if it's dislodged, just get a screwdriver and push it out. Or use a set of tweezers and then it should if it gets stuck there carefully just slide it out okay there you go there it is that is everything removed so now you just strip and clean all these components so we've got the RA axis multi drive as you can see you can't get mistaken because this is the only one with a little miniature circuit board and plugins. So this is the RA drive and if you want to remove the gears to clean these up you just simply get the two and a half millimeter allen key okay and crack these two bolts uh, these two studs and the whole mechanism should slide out. Okay, so it all slides out like so. Beware, there is three bushes here, three brass bushes on this flange. So you clean them up like so. You can remove these three screws. These are three millimeter screws to remove the the whole bracket. However, you don't have to. But one thing I need to let you know is that this pinion gear cannot be removed so the main motor drive gear you can't remove that that is permanently fixed on there so all you can do is just clean it up best you can this is also the same for the decanation axis motor drive as you can see the only difference is same sort of thing you just got to remove the two screws here on the outer cover like so and there you go again this was a little bit cleaner but it's the same sort of process grub screws there using the two and a half remove it and it all comes out so it's the same sort of setup with the decanation axis motor drive so we've got the RA axis worm drive and we're going to disc mantle it as you can see, this is the reason why we replace the bearings, or we're going to replace re we're going to replace these bearings. And as you can see, if I spin this worm drive, as you can see, it's the bearings are pretty much had it, and that's why. And there's a bit of free play, so we're going to replace those bearings. But before that we do that, I'm going to show you how to strip this part out. Using the spanner, crack the nut off, remove the retaining nut, crack this gear off using the 2.5mm Allen key, take off the grub screws. And this one like so this should pop out like so 
and then to remove the internal nut use a special tool with this with these attachments like so into the slots crack them off like so now you'll be able to turn them off by hand and that's the internal retainer extracted then you can just slide out the worm drive prise out one of the bearings and then the other bearing should prise out as well like so remember where the worm drive is located so that is now the worm drive completely stripped out as you see there this is the same as the decanation worm drive this is the same sort of setup so I'm not going to show you more in depth on that all right it's exactly the same all we're going to do is clean them up so as you can see now I've fully stripped all the components and I've placed them in separate bowls so I don't get my parts mixed up and particularly the shims and the bearings you do not want those those parts get mixed up between each axis so as you can see here I have the decanation axis and on here we have the RA axis we have the main mount head itself there and they're all in those trays so I know which each part is which and I know where things go together very crucial that you get these balls when you do a big strip down like this again if you like my videos please hit the like button I hope this is valuable information so you can undertake this project yourself please join the Facebook group we're also available from there we got a lot of advice there for all the newcomers and the beginners who are first starting out in astronomy again we've got a lot of experienced people there that can help you get on with this great hobby we have please subscribe onto my channel and please activate the bell if you want to undertake this project yourself then please hit the notifications hit that bell and it'll keep you updated for the next parts coming soon I hope you enjoyed this video please look forward to part 3 and thanks again thanks for watching and I wish you all clear skies